That's okay. awesome. Here we go. Hello, this is Dave Vasco from Rockwell Automation. I'm Director of Advanced Technology, and I'm joined here today by the finalist in the You Make It Challenge, along with Jay Flores, who kicked off the original contest. I have here with me Michael Wilburn from Roanoke, Virginia. I have Louisa Brown Wood from Bayside, Wisconsin, and Mackay Samuels Page from Atlanta, Georgia. First off, congratulations, you're all winners just being here. Thank you. Just being finalists, you've secured grants for your schools for next year for first. And that's a great start to help everybody within your teams. I want to ask you about the inspiration for this. How did this come about? Maybe I'll start with Michael. How did you get this idea and tell me a little bit about it? Um, well, I got the idea from my parents when they went on mission trips to Africa. At the time, I wasn't able to go, so my dad recorded a video for YouTube, and I watched it millions of times and saw the need for water in those like thir third world countries. So I wanted to do something here before going there. And your, your invention, can you tell me just a little bit about your invention? My invention, I wanted to improve this design um, created by Dr. Steve Mecca. And I made it where you're able to just collect um, the waste or just stuff without having to dig out everything in order to collect it in worlds where water is scarce. So this is a, a, a sanitary toilet, a dry toilet that can be used in areas where you don't have water. Yes. Oh, that's, a, that's a great idea. Thank you. I love that you chose something that wasn't necessarily a problem that you had, but a problem that's very important in the world and you could find a solution for it. Because a lot of times um, we have the technology to solve a lot of these problems, but the people that have the technology don't have that problem themselves. So glad that you looked to the outside um, and were able to come up with something that can be helpful. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Makai, let me, can you tell me a little bit about the inspiration for your project? something that can change that and that's the big backpack. I don't want I want the people who don't do stuff like that who want to do stuff like that to feel safer in this environment. So then that's why I said like let's make something with like a camera on it. And then I thought in my head like a, a backpack with a camera on it. And my dad looked at me and said, that's a good idea. Like, so I, I love the idea that you took a, a negative experience and you built an invention and used that as inspiration for an invention to help not just yourself but other people as well. That, that's really inspiring. Yeah, because I was actually getting bullied at the time because of my height. I was like a really short seven-year-old. I wasn't that tall. I looked like a kindergarten. So everybody just started making fun of me and I wanted to like put a stop to that and to people trying to hurt people. That's when the anti-bully backpack was formed. I think it's cool that you took something, a problem that most people wouldn't think of a technology solution to. They usually think of a you know, discipline or, or kind of like talking to the students and you're able to find a way to use technology to help that um, as well. Yeah, because I just didn't want it to happen anymore. And um, me and Michael were actually talking and he said he got bullied too. So I was like, I want to like make bully backpacks. If I'm able like to kick off the bully backpack and if I'm able to raise some more money, I'm going to put all that money towards the bully backpack to produce more and keep on making it. I like it. Now, Louisa, you took top honors last night. Yes. Um, and and uh, I, I, I saw you up on stage. You had a stack of business cards for people <laughs> looking for to see if you wanted to do some yeah. internships. Yeah, so I'll definitely be probably taking some of them home. Um, 
on that. Mm -hmm. um, but the main inspiration for my project was that last summer my basement flooded because our sump pump couldn't keep up with the water inflow. And flood damage actually causes $8 billion in damage every year in the United States. So it's a big problem, especially in communities like mine where almost everybody has a basement and we have a very wet climate. So flooding is pretty common. And so a couple days after our flood, uh, it rained again. So we were worried, is this going to happen again? How do we tell? So I was sat on the floor listening to our sump pump and it was like running and resting. And I was essentially writing down on a whiteboard and timing how long it was running for and how long it was off for to tell when it was about to over flood, overflow. And then I thought, why can't a computer do this? Because I'm, I can't be here every time it's raining, counting how long my sump pump is running for. But this kind of thing is perfect for a machine learning algorithm or just a computer in general to do because it's something that people people can't be there, you know, watching the sump pump all the time. When they're away from their building, when they're in another room, there's no way for them to know when it's flooding. And it's critical that you know before a flood happens. Because current solutions, they only tell you that you're flooding after you're already flooding. <laughs> so there's already water, there's already damage, yeah. and you've already lost thousands of dollars in the floor has to be replaced, any of your possessions. So that was my main inspiration. That's great. I love the fact that you're sitting down there and you're calculated it by hand and then said, yeah, we can automate this. That's a, yeah. that's a great idea. Exactly. And I need to let you know that before I even got to meet you here in person, I was hearing about you and your, your presentation, how well you handled yourself on stage and, and how uh, well developed your idea was. So congratulations on that first because you're making um, some noise here at Automation Fair. But then also that you took a, a problem that a lot of people kind of just probably accepted. You know, this is something that happens and, it, yeah. and it's... It, it's a problem, but no one had really taken that next step to come up with a cool solution, and you took some newer technologies and were able to come up with a real-life solution, which is, is excellent. Yeah. yeah, actually, all the contestants, I've heard from people all over the show floor saying, you guys did an amazing job, that they were so impressed how you can manage yourself, how clear you were, how you explained your inventions on the show floor. I think they were very, very impressed. Yeah. Jay, I gotta ask you, though, you started this whole thing off. Did you envision we'd ever get to see things like this when you started it off? Oh, man. Um, I, I had some hope, uh, especially because I knew we were going to be reaching out to the first community that we'd come up with some cool ideas. Um, but I also was like, what if, what if nobody submits anything? What if nobody, <laughs> you know, what do we do then? And um, to see the, the variety of ideas that young people had and um, the, types, the, the different types of problems that you guys were excited about solving, was very impressive to me and I feel that it's something that more of our youth need is that fun, safe space to explore and to create solutions to problems that um, could make a, a real lasting impact in people's lives. And when it comes from people as young and talented as you, it makes it even that much more exciting because if you can do this now, imagine what you all will be able to do um, as you continue to develop your, you know, your scientific and, and mathematic background. and. Um, solve even bigger and bigger problems. So not only am I excited with the results that you all had um, here, I'm excited for what comes next for each and every one of you and for all the other uh, students that submitted projects as well. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a whole lot of, uh, of fun to see and it's also very um, inspiring. Absolutely. I, I think it's inspiring for everybody that participated and I will be watching the videos and see the work they did. So I'm going to give them a quick opportunity to just you want to shout out to your teachers or friends? Um, live stream? Yeah, I, I'd like to give a shout out to my principal for just um, helping me out through it. And I, just, I thank my English teacher for um, helping me with my speech and pronunciations. It, it's, my school has helped me a lot in this. And my whole family has been so supportive that I. I can't even beat them in being supportive. <laughs> <laughs> Your family's wonderful. I had a chance to meet them, and uh, I, I enjoyed that. I'm sure the preparation you got for the school can get told to help you out. Louisa? Uh, yes, yeah, so I found out about this competition through a Rockwell Automation mentor who is mentoring my robotics team. And so my robotics team is FRC 4786 Nicolet Fear, and the program has really helped me gain confidence. Um, 
especially throughout high school, I've done different STEM opportunities like science fairs and robotics, and they've really helped me with talking to people, putting myself out there, and really taking opportunities like this. Because I know a lot of people have ideas, but they're too scared or they think that you know, their idea isn't good enough to submit to a competition like this one. And I think that Rockwell, being a part of my community, and also just STEM in general, has helped me embrace competitions like this. Oh, that's great. Thank you. And Makai, anybody you want to give a shout out to? Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to shout out my friends for being supported. Because last year in fifth grade, I had a group of friends that when I told them about my inventions, they always listened. And now this new school, since there's like new people, it isn't the same. So I'd like to shout out one of my friends, Contavian, Kaylin, and Tyler, and the Pegues, because they all listened about my adventures. I also like to um, thank one of my friend, my friend Devon, for helping me laugh. Because when the bully backpack wasn't working, I would always be down. And when I came to school that day, I was like really sad because it wasn't working. It was almost time to go to the fair. So he was just like, "Hey, cheer up! It's gonna work." work. I also like to thank my family. Just like Michael, my parents are super like overly into this, like they're like, you have to speak with big words, because like, when they saw you in practice, they're just like impressed, they're like, is she a scientist? Like, they're confused. <laughs> so, I mean, they wanted me to speak really well. I uh, also like to thank one of my teachers, Miss Mays. She informed me, and she's actually talking to my mom right now. She, she isn't even my teacher, she supported me, so. I mean, this is just something big. Yeah, that's about it. Makes me happy to hear that you guys all had some form of support <coughs> mentor, in addition to the Rockwell mentor that was provided through the program, but that you reached out to, whether it be a teacher or a family member or a friend, to help guide you in that experience. And I think any other student out there that might have an idea, like you mentioned, but doesn't know if it's it's big enough yet, um, you know, always look out for, for mentors to help you along the way. No matter how smart you are, there's always someone that can help you advance your idea, um, whether it's because they're an expert in that area or maybe they have a strength in an area that you're not as strong in. Um, always surround yourself with people like that that are going to help you take it into something that could be um, you know, bigger than you thought originally. That's, that's great advice. And maybe as we're, uh, as we're closing up here, I, now that you're veterans, you know, at 11 years old, you're a veteran of this competition, what advice would you give to um, the extent generation of inventors the people that want to try something? Um, I'll say go for it, because if you don't go for it, you'll never know if it's good or not. Yeah, that's really that's good great. advice. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Um, well, I would just say, like um, Kai said, just go for it no matter what. Even if you think that it may not work, still go for it. That means you can do better next time. Yeah, just give it a try. And Louisa? Yeah, I would definitely agree with what you two both just said. Um, but I think if you're struggling for inspiration, you can really find it anywhere. Like whether it was a negative experience like with Kai or something that you see in the world like Michael, you know, there's so many different problems that you can tackle, whether they're big problems or local problems. And I think just just go for it. Yeah, yeah that's a remarkable thing. Just the inspiration you have, I mean, a flooded basement, uh, an incident with bullying, just uh, sanitary conditions um, in the world. Just, it's amazing when you found your inspiration. And then you all looked to try to find a solution to help people, to really make people better from that. And I want to thank you all. You're all winners. I want to thank you for being part of this competition and representing your schools and your community. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. And, and like keep on say, going. Go ahead. I would like to say one last thing. So my friend Devon actually does have an invention that I think is really cool, actually. He created a bicycle with a detector. And he wants kids to stop getting hit by cars. So he actually created that. When I told him about this, he wanted to join, but it was too late. So yeah, I think that's a, a good thing for all for you guys and anyone out there to understand that yes, this was a competition that ended today, but you guys don't have to stop your journey. You know, this is just the beginning uh, for these projects and for many other projects that you all might work on in the future. Uh, understand that you guys can shape and mold the world by solving these type of problems. Yes, we're actually. Uh, me, Michael actually said something 
that um, really got to me. I was thinking like all night about it. He said maybe we can collab, maybe we can collab with Larissa, yeah. like make the project pump work better. Maybe yeah. um, just add a camera on it too. Like, let's just <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, ma yeah, maybe just like doing this can bring us together and do a lot more. Maybe you can exactly. be the head of Rockwell one day. You never know. There you go. Maybe yeah. you'll be my boss one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you for being here, appearing live on, on the automation floor. And Jay, I know you, you probably still have Sandy in your shoes from <laughs> being out on, yeah. uh, on uh, Telemundo and yeah. uh, the competitions there. I want to thank you all, and uh, we're wrapping it up. And enjoy the rest of Automation Fair. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Guys. you.